Hello, and welcome to the new show, John. It's good to see you this morning. I had no idea um, who was going to even be here when I streamed, but I've been building stuff like crazy, uh, working on this channel, but more importantly, I've been working on Timmy Mello, channel member. I bow to you. Timmy, if you're a channel member, you have a brand new uh, emoji that you have access to. And that, to me, is the fun part. Stephen Rockwood, great to see another channel member here. Holy cow, you guys are, are rolling in here this fine morning. I hope you are doing well. So, gosh, lots of stuff going on, guys. Lots of very cool stuff. Um, yeah, morning, afternoon, I should say. Uh, it's been a weird day, so it's in a weird week. But for all of my channel members here in the chat, welcome, welcome, welcome. We've got Timmy Mello, we've got Stephen Rockwood, and you guys have a new emoji, hopefully. Hopefully I saved it and did it right for this place. So, I'm going to do some painting, obviously, this morning, and I'm going to do some, uh, some talking this morning uh, in terms of what I've, been, uh, what I've been working on and what's been going on with the channel, all sorts of... Oh, yeah, there it is. Timmy Mello is dropping it right now. Welcome to the Speakeasy. Welcome, Michael Deach. It's good to see you, my friend. Howdy, chat from the Cherokee Nation. We bow to you, Michael. We bow indeed. So, um, just as always, the rules are simple. We drop our links for, for channels, and we get excited because we're here on a fine Sunday. So, lots has been going on. So, I want to cover a couple of, of things that um, that are up with the new channel, new intro, all of this kind of stuff. So, as you guys know, I love hanging out, love streaming. Finally, a quality stream, says Jim Cox. From your lips to God's ears, Jim, and God bless you. I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Um, so... There's been a lot of change-ups uh, in the last uh, couple of days, and the one I want to speak to the most that um, that that speaks to how you know much we get hit by different stuff when we're working. Good morning, 80s mate. It is great to see you, brother. How are you doing? Um, I was watching um, I was watching Eric July, and he was giving a really great impassioned uh, speech about how complicated things are behind the scenes. And how difficult, you know, all of this stuff is beyond, you know, what we can ever really, um, what we can ever really express or share. And the funniest thing that I've been dealing with and that occurred to me I needed to take care of. So for ever since you guys have seen me, this is my desktop right here, what you're seeing. Um, the desktop, the base of my desk is um, a plumbing pipe. So I built uh, it to a height that I wanted to use for streaming, right? So I built this thing out. And, uh, and it's great, but I've never been able to take the time because I'm just rolling constantly doing stuff to secure the desktop to the base, which means there's always the potential for everything to go crashing off of it. And I was listening to Eric July talk and I thought, what am I doing? I need to really take time to do this. And at the same time, I've always had this very good morning, Bordeaux. Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, all you channel members drop those uh, new uh, speakeasy emojis because we're going to get to that next. And, uh, and I've always had this easel precariously balanced where I would put my books so that I could look at my books. I always have a Frazetta book where I can see it and get at it, but I can't flip through it because either the easel would fall off the back of the desk or the, um, the uh, lip on the easel would catch the paper and tear it. And so for my birthday this year, our birthday, not for my birthday, my birthday is not in December. <laughs> for, so it wasn't for my birthday, for Christmas. My son uh, got me, which I w it was such a great gift. He he asked me what would make your life easier, Dad, and he got me a um, arm that connects to the desk and holds my books, so I can flip through them. And so this whole thing started this this realization, listening to Eric and thinking about my setup and thinking about all of you guys, the quality of the show, uh, the stuff that Shane was talking about last night, and everybody's talking about. How do we grow this audience? How do we make things more accessible? That stuff never leaves my mind. And so I finally said, I've got to clear off my desk, flip it over, bolt everything together, right? Yeah, my, my fate of dying. I still die under a pile of CG books, guys. Listen, that's it's what's meant to be. Um, but I started, you know, I put all this stuff together. My son helped me, and he built the arm for this, uh, for this book. Actually, I can show that to you guys real quick. Um, you can see it, whoops, right there. I've got a Frazetta book on it. And it's one of those those great sort of arms that has like the metal clamping on it. You can see I'm I've got a mechanical monster on the other side of me. All of this this gear and stuff right here. It's like I'm packed into this small space. And um, but he got this for me, so I bolted everything together. And then I've been feeling very you know introspective about the whole YouTube thing. And 
I, I don't know if I've mentioned this on stream. I probably have to the channel members, but just to give you guys a, a sense of this stuff. Um, I have been, you know, you always kind of struggle to find the the design or the thing that you're, you know, that you want to do and, and what's what you enjoy streaming under and all of that great stuff. And about in 2010, I got a studio space with my brother and uh, he's a terrific guy, just a, a wonderful guy. We were sharing the studio space. We were doing stuff, but you know, life changes. Uh, we were both teachers, and then we were both teaching at the same school. Great to see American Comics Company. You're always in good company when American Comics Company's in the house. Um, but we we had a lot of different stuff going on, and and so we talk every day. We hang out, but I haven't been able to get to the studio. I had to build a home workspace when I I joined up with Comicsgate. I mean, I was already there, but when I started really proper streaming, right, and. Um, but the studio name, because it was something I really loved, and I've always loved, you know, the Roaring Twenties and Thirties in terms of history, was called Speakeasy Studio, and I, uh, I did a logo for it, I pen and ink, and all of this stuff, and then I kind of never used it because I could never, you know, I, the time I used it, I was away, and I said to myself finally, I went, why am I not using that for my channel when I do a show? It fits what I'm into. It fits what I love to do. I need to do this stuff. And and so I just really started working hard on, you know, the channel and saying, all right, how are we going to keep bringing new people into this? And then the other aspect of it that was big, yeah, throwing his back out, putting the way of CG excellence on his back. That's Is that Ethan? Um, but this was the thing that, that, that really got me, man, is that um, I've been watching a lot of really cool channels, uh, Grim Life Collective, of course, Eric July's channel, um, Jericho Green's channel. And all of my Comicsgate brothers, whether, you know, when Eric Weathers is streaming or the big CG stream last night uh, while I was working. And um, and I just started thinking, you know, I've got to make something. I've got to get into a groove. I've got to take time to set up my desk. You know, this started with getting the camera set up better um, and, uh, and, and making sure that the streams look good so you guys can see everything I'm working on. And this is, this is it, man. I was like, I need to get this stuff together. And so I started working again and just the thought of my knee bumping the bottom of my desk and not worrying about everything avalanching off with which sounds fairly obvious that you would want to take care of that i'm one of those people who it's just my nature i will work on you know intros and and things like that for people's shows and i'll do all of that great stuff and i love doing that stuff that stuff will never change i'm putting together ideas for eric weathers intro on uh, comics gate live uh and i would have popped in there yesterday but i just was it was like I was trying to get all this stuff set up for you guys. But this is the thing, man. It's, um, how do I word it? It's so important to sometimes take a step back because everything just flies so fast. And particularly with this book. And oftentimes it's the most, it's the most obvious things that you need to take time to do. Like get your chair sorted, get your desk sorted. And uh, it just dawned on me, I really need to get to work. And so um, I was like, I'm going to do something that I'm really excited to do, which is bring back what I loved about that Speakeasy logo design. I'm going to create emojis for channel members of that. I'm going to still have my cheerleader. I'm going to still have, you know, uh, all the stuff that I, I love to do. But I've got to freshen things up because I want people to come to this channel who are passionate about art and just make it happen. Great mic, good camera, and put some effort into your background is an awesome start. You're absolutely right. What's up, Marcus? How are you doing? Julie, it is great to see you. Holy cow, it's like rain and people. It's rain and men. Hallelujah. And women. Hallelujah. Anthony Gonzalez Clark is here. Bordeaux is here. Oh my gosh, guys. It is great to see you. Um, it's 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 one of those things that um as I was watching channels, and I think Shane gave a really impassioned um, as he often does gave a really impassioned uh, kind of, you know, talk about, you know, we've got to make sure that we are reaching out to other YouTube channels and that we are, um, you know, uh, putting our best foot forward and really thinking about new people coming in here. And um, I'm always thinking about that. But um, the other thing that really inspired me, so it was almost like a bunch of different things all happening at the same time, kind of cascading into this this place where I was like, wow, this is this is big. Um, okay, Marcus is going to work out. Oh my gosh, are you going to hang out with Graham Nolan and work out? Oh my goodness. Um, and yeah, Julie, I hope you're feeling better. 
this is the thing, right? Is that um, I was sitting there and I was thinking about all this stuff and a painter who I really admire named Andrew Tischler. And Andrew has, uh, I've been following his stuff for maybe five or six years on YouTube. He just hit, and congratulations, Andrew, he just hit um, 500,000 subscribers. And it dawned on me when I watched his video, and it was great. He shaved his, his head so he can start, you know, illustrating and working on figures, and he wanted to be able to get a better view of his skull. And he uh, showed a great clip where he surprises his wife, and she's like, holy, you know, the things you would expect, because uh, he had long hair. But he hit 500,000 um, subscribers. And it, it dawned on me whether I'm watching Grim Life Collective or I'm watching um, Eric July's channel or Jericho Green's channel that what Shane has to say is something I really, I spend a lot of time thinking about. And by the way, bro dogs, bro dogs, bro dogs. Um, <laughs> more like EVS, says Marcus. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. Well, here's the funny thing, right? Um, I, uh, I speak easy, but I don't drink. I guess that's the best way to put it. Um, Several of the successful CG creators seem to be sensing the moment to expand, uh, not to get complacent with the success levels at previous business models. You're absolutely right, and this brings it back to it, right? How many people haven't heard of us yet, right? I know we know that it's we're not that that gigantic yet, but people who are coming into us, uh, that sounded really bad, people who are finding out about us and learning about our channel, they don't know, and our channels, I should say, and what we're doing at CG, they don't know, you know, they, how do I word it? There are more people who have no idea who we are than people who um, have are making up face, gar fake garbage about us. And we should be just showing our skill, showing what we can do. There's so much talent. Everybody here, whenever I look in the chat, guys, thank you guys. Hit the like button. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where, um, we are a really fun group of people to hang out with. We're really passionate. We love comics. We've got skill. We've got skill in our creators for days. And I just think, let's just keep getting this stuff out there and keep making work. And, uh, I still intend to die in an avalanche of comic skate books because, you know, it is written, but, uh, I really wanted to make sure that I was really paying attention to things. And as silly as it may sound, and I know I'm aware things often sound silly when I say them, freeing up space on my desk and just taking the time to go, you know, when's the last time I did something to make my workspace more usable for you guys and to make things look better? Um, oh, really? He did? Yeah, I know. I wanted to. I absolutely wanted to watch Jeremy's show last night, guys. I would have gone on Ethan's show, um, and you know, I saw the link and I just was um, just trying to get everything built and trying to sort all this stuff up. So my, my work area was a bit of a mess. But um, but having places to where if, um, I'll show you guys real quick. Um, because I don't have an easel, whoops, I'm gonna break that. Because I don't have an easel on my desk anymore, um, and I've got this arm that's lifting my stuff off the desk, right now, um, I was able to get um, the paints on my desk. So I just have to reach up to get the paints. It is so much better, guys. It's so much better. Um, add to broadcast. Indie go go shadow banning might be a blessing in disguise, given how innovative. Yes, the CG squad have become at crowdfunding. There are projects, especially Shane Davis and Michael Bancroft. You guys know I love Michael, man. Michael's Michael's the man. Uh, Michael and Mel and and Rob and all of my brothers, you know, who have just been doing, you know, on on CG team back in the day, and uh, seeing Eric Weathers just congratulations, congratulations, Eric Weathers working full time for for Eric July. That is huge news this week. And yeah, things are, are changing, man. It's Things are changing for the better. But we've got to kind of be the agents of that change. I don't think it's... Um, how do I put it? I think that we have to think about being successful YouTubers or successful... Let's just say this because I don't ever want to link us to a platform. We have to think about being the most successful content creators we can be. And not everybody's going to, it doesn't mean we can be perfect because we've got other skill sets we got to take care of, painting and everything else. You guys know this. Um, huge news, says Timmy Mello. Yes, and congrats to the Eric's, you know? You mean Malin Whole White is now in easy reach. It is, and actually, um, I got to change the label on my new tube because my old tube still has it, but I got to do that by hand. Because, uh, yeah, hail coach and, and uh, hail Mr. Malin. Coach John Malin. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's. Um, if you think about, well, I was thinking about Andrew Tischler, who's a, a I think he's New Zealand based now, but he grew up in um, Perth, I think, when he was a kid. Uh, terrific dude, paints waves, and he is guys. If you want to see like some serious hyper realism, Teflon Ron, it's great to see you, brother. How you doing? Um, it's um, he is so incredible. But I thought there are five hundred thousand people following him, like now on or subscribe to him on YouTube, and I thought. I need to really be working hard on this channel because he talked about he's been at it for again nine years I think it was maybe not nine or ten years same thing goes with the Townsends and I just think that's the best way for us to be blowing this this space up and making it a much better place um, a much much bigger place and better place for creators to come in because it's again it's not enough for me to just watch um, the fumbling of the um, of the insanity that is. Uh, the mainstream comic industry. Oh, which is interesting because um, another thing I did this week, because I was thinking about, um, yeah, hard work, dedication is what it's all about. Another thing I did this week that was great is I took some time out to have a little bit of recreation, just a bit. Um, and I got a, a monthly subscription to um, uh, to Daily Wire so that I could watch uh, Terror on the Prairie. Really enjoyed it. Holy cow, that's intense. But yes, the Choice Voice YouTube channel, indeed, we love him, and the Townsends as well, and all of my regulars, you know, all of my my typical, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, links, please, please, guys. I still haven't updated everything, um, but it's 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 so important. But, uh, but I was looking at uh, Gina's work on Terror in the Prairie, and I was really impressed by her acting, the cinematography, the landscape shots. Guys... We now is the time. Now is the time to make our best stuff, and so let's just keep doing it. Share this link out. Do whatever you can do, and uh, we're gonna try to make the best content that we can make and show people how we do things. And this page has been undergoing a lot of of really cool changes, um, showing you know how your first vampire gets created, showing how he passes that along to his disciple, who is very much a Nosferatu. Yeah, Gina's uh, Gina's all right, isn't she? Uh, <laughs> Marcus Kilcrew, it's like, yes, understood, my friend, understood. Yes, Gina is really pretty. Yes, she is. And she's a great actor, and I didn't realize how great her acting could be until I saw that. And I know you guys know, because I have the Woody Strode painting uh, on the wall, that, and uh, I also did a painting of uh, Open Range. Um, that's a pretty large painting, too, as well. I think it's like uh, two feet by three feet as well, uh, that I love Westerns. So it's been really, really great to see, um, uh, to see you know Gina in a western and see them do such a great job because um, my favorite western is Open Range, and it almost had at certain points in that movie it almost had a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It almost had a uh, Night of the Living Dead feel to it because she was trapped in this this house. But it's it's just dawned on me. Um, yeah, Amen, John. You know how I feel about that man. You know how I feel about that. Um, but I started thinking about how when I'm working on my book and I'm trying to show people, like, this is what we do. Eric talked about how people don't know how much is involved in what we do. And why, like, why would you want to? It's one of the best things in the world to be a fan and a backer as someone who also backs CG books and, and makes them as well. Um it's because you just you get to enjoy it. We're here to entertain you. We're not here to push the work off on you. And um, the thing that that sort of struck me as interesting about that was um, this line from Dragon, the Bruce Lee story, where he says, um, "People haven't seen the beauty of our culture, and uh, let's show it to them." And I just thought, people haven't seen the beauty of what we're doing here. So I want you guys to sit back, relax. And have enjoying your Sunday. Get yourself a, a afternoon. If you've already had your lunch, maybe get yourself something nice to sit down with. If it's cold where you are, as it is here, grab yourself a hot cocoa. I had some waffles because I haven't changed. Uh, I had some waffles before the show started because uh, I got up early, but I got a late start on everything because I was working uh, to make the new emoji and everything like that. But just get yourself set up, and we're going to do some really cool painting on this fine morning, you know? Because um, we're making some of the most beautiful stuff in the world. Like, I look at these pages, 
and uh, that are coming out, and they're just insanely detailed and chock full of narrative and structure. And I want to say this too that um, when I started working on this book, um, from the start of this book to now working on these final pages, the entire way I make art has changed. And I don't mean uh, the materials as much as I mean I sort of had a breakthrough with this work that I can't quite describe, guys. You know? Uh, yeah, Graham would be upset about my waffles. Absolutely. Perfect weather for an abominable snowman. Timmy Mello, you ain't kidding. Um, please never make your, uh, make your hot chocolate with water. Use milk. I know, I know. Who was Pete, anyway? Okay, I just think I just missed something. But it's probably a joke that I'm too, uh, slow to pick up. But, um, but I was sitting, <laughs> but I was sitting here and I thought, you know, I've got to make, I've got to, you know, uh, look at my artwork and, and, you know, take a look and see where I'm at right now. And I used to uh, have such a, a much more labor-intensive process when I worked. I mean, I really had a labor-intensive process. So I would work and I would, um, you know, kind of go, okay, now where's this go? Where's that go? And now I just scribble, I change things, and I paint. I've gotten so much faster at this stuff, it's ridiculous. So I've got... Um, I've still got four pages to go, but by the end of the day today, I'm going to be starting... How do I word this? I'm going to be starting the um, the first of the four pages left today, but once I get everything completely rendered out up to that point, um, I'm going to let you know because that means there are one... There's three pages left, and that means there are 30 pages of painted comic book. So I'm almost to the 30th page. I kind of uh, did a number on myself by adding this double page spread, but guys, it is everything it needed to be. It is, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like, this is everything we need right here. Oh, St. Peter, amen. Yes, indeed, St. Peter. Um, <laughs> that makes sense, says John. Um, but that's that's really, uh, guys, It this had to happen. This double page spread had to happen because it's, um, it makes the, the, it just makes this book next level as far as I'm concerned. If you could see the flow of the pages um, that are before and after this page, and this is the look at the backstory, this is essentially right here, a portrait of, this is the landscape of how evil and the vampires and the Thulu mythos and the Lovecraftian meets um, the, the Dracula or vampire mythos. This is how they tie together, illustrated in a two page spread, which includes a Necronomicon. It includes you know, uh, the grimoire of this world. I mean, it is so, so worth it. I, I'm really happy how it's coming out. Hey, Sark, good morning, or good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are. Perhaps morning, yeah, occasionally waffles aren't terrible. I agree with that. Uh, geez, I'm doing detailed layouts, almost pencils, um, then light box onto Bristol with redraws and then ink. Wow. Yeah, for me, I have to tell you guys, um, I was very much that way um, for a long time and then I got into painting and I had to rethink things a little bit but I still couldn't use the old way of doing things but now I mean I do some penciling every now and again when I go okay I need to kind of know where that's going but it's almost during the painting phase but I just I I try to get as much paint on the board when I start as possible so that I can get that that texture work that you're seeing right here going I was sent I sent a um I sent a message to uh, Razor Fist because I was showing him some ink work I do, which you guys who are channel members have seen. I'm going to try to have the next page um, scanned of uh, uh, of uh, Deathbird up for channel members. And that's the black and white story that Rob uh, likes. So Rob Arnold's uh, favorite story. I'm just putting it, um, the pages I have done of it in the channel member section in high resolution, kind of cleaning them up and, uh, you know, resolving any little areas that need to be resolved. So I'll have that soon. But I was sending Razor Fist um, a pen and ink or a acrylic and ink sketch of one of his characters uh, that I was just doing to warm up and get my brush, you know, on point. Dare I say? And uh, when I sent him that, I was like, going, oh, "I'm going to do more of this stuff, more demos, more everything, guys, more everything." Comics Gate, I want to grow. What is up, Phil? How are you doing this morning, brother? Uh, it is good to see you. And uh, let me see here. Hold on, let me adjust my glasses. Um, 
add to oh from the top of the head peter gilmore or pete callen that's right both are great and peter gilmore i love his detail stuff he's crushing it um i want to simplify but i'm doing oh inca characters and designs and i'm figuring out in the storytelling um may i say um, could you use your power of persuasion to get me more hours in the day to watch CG, please? You know, Phil, make it happen. Uh, Marcus, let me make a suggestion to you that you might uh, enjoy. Look up an artist by the name of Laura. I, if you're driving, please don't. If you've got, you know, a lot of weight over your head right now because you're lifting, please don't. Laura Zuccheri, and it's Z-U-C-C-H-E-R-I, I think. Laura Zuccheri. She does a book... That's a cross between Mobius and Hayao Miyazaki. And some of the touchstones in the book are very Incan um, or Mayan, depending on, because it's a it's another world, so I don't know really what it is. And the character designs are great. She's one of the most incredible artists I've ever met. Um, she is Italian-born, and last I talked to her, she was living in Germany. But holy cow, that stuff might be the cat's pajamas to you, man. You might love it. I had a, a copy of the book, but as I often did, I get used to give my books out to students um, if they liked a book and didn't have it because that's, you know, <laughs> that's one of my teaching vices. But, um, you know, it's uh, it, you will love it. It might be worth a look. Yes, Laura, uh, it's Z-U-C-C-H-A-R-I. I think that's how it is. And she is awesome. Yep, Stephen Rockwood drawing those. Yeah, she is freaking amazing, guys. She is next level absolutely incredible um teflon ron says i yeah i think that's it i think that's it it might be an e instead of an a but i'm not positive i like belgium waffles and want to try those puffy japanese style waffles i've seen those too they have some of them at the um gosh where do they have them they have them at the um shin godzilla uh, amusement park it's really great and really cool oh there it is uh stephen rockwood just dropped the link to uh the instagram yeah guys when you go look at that brace yourselves that's all I'm going to say. But Marcus, you might absolutely love that stuff. And again, oh yeah, so let me talk a little bit more about the whole speakeasy mentality here. So when I started with this whole um, with this whole speakeasy thing and when what I liked about it was, um, I called it the speakeasy inspiration preserve. And Laura is a perfect you know example of this, which is, I wanted to create a physical place back in the day, and now I think it's even better if it's bigger like this and it's online, um, where other artists could come, because we have a lot of friends who are, are um, professional artists who are around, um, and hang out and just get their, get re-inspired. And, you know, calling it an inspiration preserve, we were like, you know, leave all your work at the door. Don't talk, you know, all this, this crazy, you know, office politics stuff and all of that stuff. Just come in here. Look at this incredible library of books, knowledge, and inspiring, you know, thinking, and just make your, enrich your day. And the funny thing is, is how hard it is for people, I think, sometimes to do that, you know, for people to just kind of step out and stop thinking about all of that stuff, you know. But, uh, I mean, it's, that's what I want to do here. So when people sit down and they just see a brush working on a piece of paper, and uh, they go, well, hey, this is cool. Oh, where can I get this? Where can I get that? It's some of the best advertising you'll ever get. Let's zoom out a little bit here because I want you guys to be able to see the scope and scale of what I'm doing here. There we go. That's a little better. That makes it a little bit easier. That's right. Character design references. There you go. Yeah, if you type in character design references and type in my name, you might find some interesting stuff there. But I don't know. I think I've shared that with a lot of you channel members. But... Um, yeah, there has been there has been stuff. There has been. I had a, a crazy wild history before um, before I got here. Got to uh, got to CG, and uh, found all of you wonderful people. And I guess that's the thing, right? If you've ever um, if you've ever left a job, left a career, and kind of moved on to the next phase of your life, one of the hardest things in the world is not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. And that's something that I was doing a lot of thinking about over the last uh, few days since my last stream and I said at no point did I ever say I'm going to stop you know and, and at no point did I um, make some kind of agreement to surrender all of the cool ideas I had and all of the things I wanted to do in fact this situation should be freeing those up uh, thank you Stephen Rockwood drawing says Marcus good morning Michael Bancroft my brother good yeah good morning good early morning there my god 
Double pager. You're absolutely right, Michael. It's a double pager for a book that has an illustration of a book in it. It doesn't get any more meta than that. Um, and if you haven't checked out the Laura Zuccheri link yet, Michael, check it out because you're going to flip over her stuff. You're going to absolutely love it. But I started thinking about how, um, you know, the, the fun thing about being in an in individualistic environment and in an individualistic, um, you know, individual liberty environment like Comicsgate is that you get to bring things into it that aren't already there. 80s made you hanging out? All right, my friend. You heading out good? Uh, gotta go. Family time? Listen, don't ever miss it for a second. And best to the family, 80s made. Much love, brother. And I will. And thank you for catching on the on the replay. Um, but yeah, it is. It is such a um, it's such a freeing thing. But sometimes it's uh, you can forget that you're free after working in environments where um, you know everybody kind of. You know, you're not allowed to think how you want to think and do everything you want to do. And I think in many ways, uh, the tricky thing about coming in here is being around a lot of great people who have strong opinions of what they want to do and what they uh, want to try out and still remembering that you have to bring what you bring to the table, that those things are not... Um, there aren't any orders in terms of how to do things. There's good common sense, you know, the mail-in method being a really great example of that. Um, but there's great common sense out there. But everybody's asking you, as I think Shane and, and Eric were talking about, build, 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 build. That is what we have to do. We have to keep building things. And John dropping links. Thank you guys so much. Yes, yeah, sign up for uh, the Lucent 2 Paint of Death. And for all of you folks watching this, if you're new to the channel, my name is Shantan Jetty. This is Shantan Jetty Art. I always forget to do this. Um, but if somebody could post a link in the chat to Michael's um second chance essentially campaign on his own website for the lucent first issue because it dawned on me the other day that i'm not not talking about that enough and i want to make sure that i am because i'm working on my book nosfero the link is in the description it is still available on indiegogo on uh in demand but there are other books out there that i want to make sure that i am talking about always and promoting and one of my comic skate brothers and artist brothers Mr. Michael Bancroft has a the first issue available on his own website. And that's the thing I'm most excited about um, for those of you guys who are trying to catch up. Him and his wife Mel have created CG Now. CG Now is an outstanding... Um, <laughs> don't use that AI method of making comics. Past Master Dan. Yes, Mr. Bancroft. That's right. Well, it's it's ba it's uh, Michael, Mr. Bancroft, if you're nasty, according to Jan Janet Jackson. And thank you, John, for putting the link there. Um, you can see most of my work, including my first Inca Mayan gaming work at Comic Art Fans under my name. Excellent, Marcus. I can't wait to check it out, man. That's terrific. Yeah, I mean, guys, CG Now is great. Absolutely right, guys. And so Michael's one of those people... Um, and again, I think Shane and Yonzi, like there's so many creators, I can't overstate this. One of the great things about um, being, you know, working in Comicsgate and having, you know, um, and having so many different creators that you can you can see trying things out is that we get to kind of brainstorm and we get to kind of do things that are, you know, where we all benefit from new information, new knowledge that's out there. And so for me, that is what this is about right here. This is about me bringing what has been um, has been successful for me on this YouTube channel and just trying to bring it to the next level and trying to make sure that I'm making stuff that um, that casuals who come in here and haven't seen um, what we're doing and haven't seen comics are going to come in here and go, well, I'm here for painting, but I didn't know all this other stuff was going on because that's how I got into this stuff. I wouldn't have heard if it wasn't for um, if it wasn't for those early um, Star Wars streams of Ethan's. I wouldn't have heard of John Malin. I wouldn't have heard of your boy, Zach. I wouldn't have heard of any of that stuff. And that was kind of one of the great, you know, fortunate things about whatever that was that we, you know, they decided to do, uh, with those flicks. That was one of the great things about it, you know? And by the way, what you're seeing right here in this double page spread, what's up, Matthew Fowler? How are you doing? My friend, <laughs> did you enjoy, did you enjoy my, uh, Malkovich video? <laughs> I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Um, but yeah, man, I, when I was, um, when I was looking at the stuff that we're, we're doing here and I was looking at, um, this, the spread that I'm working on, I wanted to do something reminiscent of that kind of, um, Warren publishing EC comics, uh, the stuff that Todd did, Marvel horror comics, 
where I had the pages of this book kind of floating around making a panel border and then going into the book and binding it. So it's got that, if you saw Evil Dead uh, when they have the uh, stop motion animation of the book being written in all of the pages and then it slams shut, that's what I wanted to really do, man. That was a big thing. Comics Gate comics books, books and graphic novels are available at CG now. You are darn right, guys. So if anybody is new here and they're going, where's the coolest stuff in the independent comic scene happening? I'm seeing the mainstream. I don't know what's going on with it. Where do I find that good stuff? Where are some of my favorite creators? Where are people doing some of my favorite genres? It's right here, guys. So check out CG now, and it's a great way to browse. Super important. Oh, my God. Past Master Dan, thank you. Well... Lord knows I certainly look at Frazetta enough. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> much love. Thank you so much, man. I really do appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Um, I, I'm so inspired by so many um, so many great artists, and I always try to, to stand on the shoulder of giants to the extent that I can. And, um, for example, like right here, I just say, how can I adjust the camera to make it more interesting? And Bob Ross, thank you, John. I appreciate that. Um, one of the things I try to do is I try to think about, let me just rough this in here. There we go. One of the things I try to really do is think about how, when you have the page, what you show and how epic in scope the things you show are really comes down to just how much skill you have and how much you can imagine things. And so for this section right here, what I wanted to really do, happy accident indeed, uh, one of the things I wanted to do here was I was going to have this uh, this character who starts feeling resentful. Stop me if you've heard this one uh, in terms of the people that uh, <laughs> who can't stand what we're doing. Um, I started thinking about, well, I'm going to have the figure standing in, you know, behind here in this panel, like, you know, in about the same height as this character. And then I thought, what am I doing? This is, this is comics. I can rough in that other character and have them far away, way further in the background, you know, as they, they sit here watching with envy what is happening at this point in the story. And I thought, why am I not doing this? You know, why am I not pushing the perspective on this? Because scope and scale are a huge part of what we do here in comics. And that happens when I look at manga as well. Um, one of the manga that I remember looking at uh, that really kind of um, just got me thinking like, wow, we can really push things was Berserk. Um, rest in peace, by the way, the creator of Berserk, man. And guys, I'll tell you another thing too. Life is short. Um, oh my gosh. What is going on, guys? Is this like a positivity intervention? You guys are killing me, man. Um, oh, dude, I would love to paint Adele Keown. Uh, I would absolutely love to, but I'd be too nervous. It's crazy. Yeah, buy Berwerk now, only $29.99. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> Berserk. I think you meant what I get what you're saying. But um, but yeah, it's, um, it's such a fascinating thing because we we basically have to turn our creativity up. And while it can be, as I think Eric said really well, while it is more work than we can ever truly explain to be on the, the, you know, making the parallel economy end versus the, um, the side that I'm also on, which is not supporting the other stuff and basically breaking that addiction. It is just, it's just us at the end of the day, sitting at a desk and hopefully one that's bolted to the uh, base, as I did this weekend. Um, and just trying to make stuff that's going to speak to people. We are, um, we're all kind of our own one-man army. We're all our own one-man wolf pack. <laughs> um, Shane is a much more clunky coach, but he tries. Yeah, well, he can he can throw, man. He's got some punching power, which I like and respect. I love, I love that Shane likes, you know, combat sports, man. Uh... Oh my gosh. I, I can't imagine a uh, a Dale Schonf cover win. That would be just nuts, man. That would be nuts. I mean, I'll, Dale knows. I'll always collaborate with Dale. I love Dale. He's uh, he's a super nice guy. He's um, and, and he's a huge influence to me, man. I've got, kicking around here somewhere, I've got my um, my pit trade paperback from Full Bleed Studios. But, um, but yeah, we've lost some amazing creators. And uh, I know I've talked about him a lot uh, this week. 
um, obviously, but just again, just want to give another shout out to um, the late, great, amazing Jason Pearson. Uh, first thing I did when I woke up this morning was, because um, he was on my mind, um, I uh, I watched a, a video interview of him from 2011, and I just, I can't believe, man, I just, it's just, it's it's rough, man. It's rough, rough when we lose um, a great artist, and while, you know, I, I did, you know, meet him when I was, um, you know, at Gaijin Studios interning for um, one summer, and I used to go down there um, a lot to learn things. Um, I learned it more there than I learned in art school. Um, it was just his artwork was such an inspiration. Like I never knew what to say to him, man. Hail Sheeple Hunter, how are you doing, my friend? It is great to see you, brother. It is great to see you here. Um, yeah, mental health issues are no joke. Amen. And your boy Zach threw it down, and, and thank you, Zach. By the way, if you're out there, Richard Meyer, you you did do a great job, Mister Monkey Boy, 1969. Great to see you, Prater Seven. Great to see you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. Indeed, indeed. Um, oh man, that was yeah. I that was the other thing. So imagine this: I go to um, I go to Twitter, and um, and that was of course in the um, in the Comics Gate Live green room. I saw that, and I just my heart just sank, man. Yeah, it, guys, it, I know we talk about this all the time, but it's um, I would not if if I if life was not precious to me, perhaps and just security and survival were, um, I wouldn't be here. You know, I would have just stayed where I was at my job. I would not have taken on this work of starting my own business and having to promote that business. And, you know, I, I wouldn't have done that. I mean, why would I do that to myself? But I wanted to, you know, take on the just insane amount of work of, you know, trying to start establishing that, that you know, parallel economy that uh we talk about and um and and also make sure that i'm doing it in such a way that's respectful of and uh mindful of the fact that i do have a family and i do have um people that i've got to take care of and i think that um i really do believe that when you put yourself on the right track in your life that that stuff sort of tends to I don't want to say it just works itself out, but you're more efficient. And so that rest of that stuff will come. But it's like, that's why I've been working on, um, I spend a lot of time working on this channel. I mean, this channel was so small when I started doing this. Since I've been in the last year or two, I've doubled the size of this channel. And it's it's got to keep going. But it's also, um, you get to that point where you break that static friction, you work, you have exponential growth. And then you get to that point where you have to re push for the next level and uh that's that's the next bit you know it's going to be a lot of work to get it to the next stage and so i'm trying to take everything i'm doing well hang on to that and uh and try to add more stuff so that you guys get a better show more books and uh you know my family gets uh you know gets to uh enjoy building this jonathan jetty art this this is our family business there we go. And so you can see I'm just kind of roughing in some stonework right there. And that's the big thing. Uh, Michael, with um, it's often a fine line between smashing success and um, and a sad ending. Best not to idolize the successful or be overly critical of those who fall short. It's a tough world. I couldn't agree with you more. And I will say, um, I will say, <laughs> there's past Master Dan right there. Um, absolutely. Um, and, and that's the thing, too. You know, it's, uh, yeah, terrific guy, man. Terrific guy. Um, my brother-in-law, uh, oh geez, I'm so sorry to hear that. And he was super successful. Ex and this is the thing, right? Um, I, and I, I can't overstate this stuff guys. It is, um, how do I word it? If you're doing the things that you believe are important, the hard work does not seem as hard. And if you're spending time with the people who, you know, you want to be spending time with, and that goes with all of you guys here on the channel. Um, you channel members who have been crushing it. By the way, channel members, I want to make sure I say this. You, If you're coming in here late, you've got a brand new emoji, which is the Speak Easy logo. Um, that studio logo I created all the way back in 2010 um, for um, my dream studio. And then I realized my dream studio space, because I didn't stream. I didn't know anything about this stuff back in that day. Um, my dream studio is now happening here with all of you guys. 
and that's the coolest thing in the world, man. I, it's, it doesn't get much better than that. There we go. Oh, this is going to be so fun. I cannot wait uh, till this this double page spread is done. This was like a um, this was kind of like a last second adjustment in terms of what I wanted to do. Um, I do dream about you. Yeah, all the Prater Seven. Not a night goes by. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying uh, you are in your second uh, trimester phase? A uh, phase? <laughs> Blue eyes. Yeah, that's I see what you're saying. I got gotcha. you. Um, Envy corrupts no matter. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. It absolutely does. And that's the thing too. Oh man, YouTube is being wonky right now. Is it having trouble there? Uh, and Shave is with us today. Good to see you, Shave. Um, let's see here. I've heard the rumor that channel members on average have... Pff, I'm not reading. <laughs> shave. Behave. <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, are, you guys are trouble. Shave is especially trouble. Shane Davis has never given us any trouble, but shave? I don't know, brother. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's um, it's going to be so cool to see how this stuff comes together. And I really want to look back on, you know, God willing, and I'm still alive. Um, I want to look back on this channel, similar to the way I saw Andrew Tischler look back on his channel which is, I want to see a lot of growth. I want to see a lot of improvement. I mean, don't I don't mean just numbers, by the way. Growth in terms of my understanding of what I'm doing and my consistency, because it's hard to be consistent when you're trying to figure things out. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh my gosh. Hey, Shanth, I'm sending the second edition file to the printer today. Oh my gosh. Congratulations, Michael. And by the way, um, let me just, uh, for in, in honor of uh, Michael sending it to uh, the printer today, this is for you, Michael. Not that. That's not for you. This is for you. There you go. That's better. That's what I was looking for. Congrats, man. You have been doing incredible work forever in this space. And really... Um, pretty much my first Comicsgate friend, for God's sake, which is a really cool thing. Now, I haven't figured out why the universe conspires to put some of my best friends on the opposite side of the planet, but that's just how it works, including Andrew Tischler, who is in your neck of the woods, by the way, um, and a hell of a great artist. I think you would love his stuff, but he's a uh, hyper-realist painter, but congratulations on getting the second edition of the Lucent to the Printer Man. Um, it's so funny. It seems like how many things and how many um, how many strategies or plans do we have that get shifted by our our need, our need to innovate? You know, they say necessity is the mother of all inventions, and I can't think of anybody who invents better than Michael Bancroft. Um, printer, um, oh, the printer is going with I'm going with is amazing. Oh, that is awesome. Uh, Nerve racked this time around. Yes, it's always great when the work is done. Uh, that's absolutely right. Just a tip to CG creators. Don't do Chromium covers. Okay, fair enough. I wasn't planning on it, but I'm learning. Um, I have so many new friends all over the world now. Ingreed, Passmaster. Absolutely. And hail chat. And all of you channel members, remember, you have a brand new, uh, speakeasy emoji that you can use whenever you want to. So drop that speakeasy logo, um, in the, uh, in the chat if you uh, want to test it out. I got um I decided to build a new emoji for it because it was just a great I got my desk finally sorted thanks to my awesome son and uh, got all of that stuff together and I said I need to I need to really do something to kind of celebrate and make sure that I get this thing uh, get what I'm doing going because when you don't have a comfortable space to work in and you're so focused on the work that you don't take time to figure out your chair and desk situation it's like, uh, it can make everything so much harder, you know? And, and I just was like, I didn't realize how much I was working trying not to knock things over because I was so, um, you know, crammed into this little corner with an unstable desk. And I just went, what am I doing? Just fix the bloody thing. And finally I got it together. There we go. 
All right, let's see. Mighty Geek Studio, great to see you here. Yeah, save variant covers for special editions. Amen. That's my next plan. Lloyd Burton, channel member Lloyd Burton. It is great to see you, my friend. You have that awesome new emoji. I love seeing it. Michael, too, as well. Thank you, channel members. You guys are the best. Yeah, that Speakeasy logo is one of my absolute favorite things, man. I just love this stuff. Because, I mean, guys, let's just make all this stuff as fun as we possibly can. Let's make... Oh, my gosh. Super chat from Joe Mello. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything less because he's always throwing down, always throwing down. I have so much fun uh, with you when we're hanging out in uh, and on the streams, man. So it's great to see you, <laughs> especially Double Impact as well. Thank you so much. Super chat from Joe Mello. Hey, Sean, just want to drop a line. God bless you and your family. God bless you and your family, by the way. And keep up the great work. Thank you so much. And let me please send a cheerleader your way. Here you go, Joe. This one's for you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for the uh, for the super chat. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, it went away. Can you hear me now? Is that better? All right. So, uh, sorry, I had some lag there. Yes, I would love to do a Nosferu poster. Absolutely love it. Skunk Artworks, good to see you, my friend. How are you doing? Guten Abend, everyone. Hail Schant, hail chat. Uh, vielen Dank. Uh, it's great to see you, my friend. And, uh, yes, Joe Mello, please p give my best to your family, and thank you so, so much. Okay, cool, you can hear me. Good, just making sure. Um, right on, and thank you. You're very welcome, my friend. I got a cheerleader once. I know, Mr. Monkey Boy, I know. I know how it goes. I hope you didn't send a super chat that I missed, though, so please tell me you did not send a super chat that I missed. Because, uh, that would not be good. I do not want that to happen. But, yeah, so, when I'm working on these, these, um, these cobblestones... I've always been a massive fan of, um, of, of videos and documentaries on ancient Egypt. I would say a enormous amount of time was spent. You're all, let me tell you something, Mr. Monkey Boy, 1969. Um, no man is poor when they are rich in friendship and you, my friend are rich in friendship. So know that. Um, but this is the thing I want you to think about is that when I was, you know, raising my kids, like most of what I did were docu showing them documentaries on, you know, wildlife, planet Earth, all that great stuff, um, and then showing them a lot of stuff on ancient Egypt. And I've been fascinated by that stuff since I was a kid. There's just something about that scale. And whatever I'm working on this book, and I'm showing, you know, the, the land of the Necronomicon and the land of Amun al Hazared, I'm always trying to capture some of that scope. And some of that that quality because you just cannot believe the the scope that we were building in back in the days of ancient Egypt I mean that is some incredibly epic stuff and that's really for me that's what I was really inspired by when I'm doing this stuff here God, my mustache is like up my nose uh, let me see yeah YouTube keeps trying to push me uh, back <laughs> from life. <laughs> yeah that's right man but I I loved that stuff and uh, I've seen some uh, some YouTube videos which I've been watching a ton of YouTube, like most of the world at this point. Um, but uh, I've seen some really great YouTube videos of people walking around the Great Pyramids with GoPros, and you really get a sense of the scale in a way that you just don't typically get unless you see someone walk the full, you know, perimeter of one of those things. It is crazy, man. That and the Great Sphinx as well. I definitely am going to have some elements of that kind of stuff um, in the future in Nosferu, although they are in it in this issue. For those of you guys who know that, that page that starts the uh, flashback where um, Fenrir Malin, uh, also going by Greylock, named by Greylock, named Greylock or called Greylock by Nosferu as a boy, um, he, uh, he tells the story to Laurel, the backstory of what they know, where all of this, these people came from and where all of this stuff started. And it starts in ancient Egypt. And that's the dissolve that happens into this part of the story. Uh, let me see here. Um, Doctor Lung's comics used to have posters and calendars in the middle of the um, in the middle of the books, but this was a Hong Kong publisher from the late uh, '80s and '90s. Hey, listen, let me tell you something, Mighty Geek Studios. Um, yeah, it's a <laughs> well, it wasn't. Here's the crazy thing: a lot of it was um, was skilled labor, you know. And you crack me up, John. I, I feel like uh, Malin would have really loved that joke. Um, but I love Hong Kong comics. I don't know if any of you guys have ever collected uh, Hong Hong Kong comics. It's a cross between, uh, in some ways, European comics and um, and uh, manga. 
but they often do full they are full color books in some cases the hong kong style i'm thinking of with speed lines but it's all in color it's all hand painted and it's hilarious john's cracking himself john you have have made us laugh on double impact on gabe's channel and on this channel more times than i can count i mean you just drop us man <laughs> i love it dude i absolutely love it but um but i love the hong kong style books there was an adaptation of crouching tiger hidden dragon that was really good uh, and the artwork in it was beautiful, man. I just love that stuff. All right, let me see here. Let's get some columns in here, too. Just get those roughed in. Try not to knock into the cameras or anything. There we go. Now we got that. Get those ellipses roughed in. There we go. I want to make sure I'm getting the scope captured as best as I can. Not me. Oh, stop. Well, no, I can't stop. That's not how it works. Um, would there be any reference to gods like Anubis or Horus? Not so much. I'm going to... Well... There, there is and there isn't. That's the tricky part. Um, but not overt. Not overt references. I mean, you got to think about it. I've got a werewolf. I've got a giant sort of ghost dog in Phantomas. Um, and I've got, yeah. There's the stuff. I'm, what I'm going to try to do, and you saw me doing this um, on the double page spread I did for Malin's um, Visions book, that uh, I'm creating my own sort of stone carving work that is the culture of the vampires and the culture of you know what Amun al Hazared unlocks and I'm even tr I'm not really coming up with my own language or any of that stuff um, but uh, it's uh, I'm not Rini so I can't <laughs> it's not how my brain works um, I, I just can't get there but um, but I am trying to um, I'm always coming up with new um, iconography and trying to, to do stuff that's a little bit crazy that sort of shows that this is an ancient um, this is an ancient culture and that it's it's tied it sort of runs parallel to ancient egypt and you can kind of see how that starts to like look at the scope we're able to get in there with this character that's like walking you can really the goal is to put him as much on that that focal point as i can so that you really see um you can see his envy like that that there's now a new sort of child that's going to be um admired there's now a focus that this uh, Amun al Hazaret is going to have that is not him. And so while he has always been his servant and helping him do things, stop me if you've heard this story before, now that Amun al Hazaret has created something new that he sees as um, very much uh, the child, the resentment begins right here. And that is uh, ultimately what leads to um, a change and the story that leads to uh, Nosferu. So that's the part for me that. Um, like I said, the, the, there's a lot of plot in this book. Like I move, I, I cover a lot of ground in this book and I'm one of those people. And I know Razor Fist talks about this a lot, guys. I'm one of those people who prefers, um, um, high plot, lower page count because I just don't, I, I, I just feel like I need that, you know? Um, oh, Dr. Lung, let me see if I can add this here. Dr. Lung comics taught me martial ar arts also, which was fun. They were marketed as comics that taught martial arts. Oh, that's awesome. Be right back, need coffee. John, understood. Oh, no, your grimoire uh, fell apart. <laughs> Orange covering eyes. Yeah, that's right, I see it. Yeah, I, I, I love how I read the emojis because like, they're not coming up here, but it's too funny. Um, I love these smaller chats. Uh, we can get to know uh, one another. I feel lost on the larger chats. You know what's so funny, too, is, is that um, I love... I love all of the different stuff we do, but it, I know what you mean. It's it's great to be able to kind of connect with creators one on one, and I know that that's one of the biggest thing. Here's an idea, Sean: create a scroll that warns the reader of the dangers within. Of uh, I've got some stuff like that in my mind. Let me tell you, that's a, that's great too. We're on a similar place, yeah. Same here, Marcus uh, says uh, Timmy Mello. I'm reading Blake. I've got that uh, chat there and this one there as well. You know, that was the thing I was thinking about when I was watching um, Townsend's the other day is that you don't even think about it that much that there's a, a moment where you have um where you're live streaming 
and uh, you got you get to like talk to people. That's why you always remember the people who were there from the start because they were in the space when there wasn't anybody in the space. But when you get to be somebody um, like you know John Townsend when they do their um, Nutmeg Tavern stream on um, on Fridays, I think it is, or you know um, you you know Grim Life Collective. Even I saw them with this when they were streaming and they do um, they do uh, talk over movies and say what you know what time period they're at at the movie. A little bit like what A's Made Consumer does, come to think of it. Um, but, you know, it's just, it's flying. You know, you see this with Nick Ricada, you see this with all these folks. And yeah, the smaller streams can be really nice for just chilling and, and getting to kind of get to know a creator. But that's why I built in that fail safe. Because um, I do have the option to stream for channel members. And uh, I got to figure out how to do it through Ecamm though still. I'm still ironing, ironing out all of those, uh, those kind of kinks. But um, it's uh, it'll allow me to to manage things. And I don't know what you do when you have that many uh, channel members like that. I don't. That's where I'm like I'm out. Like I, I can't. My brain does not envision that far uh, into things. But for now, it's good because if I want to do you know just a, a hangout stream or a chat stream, at least I can definitely still do that on um, on a Streamyard because I'm paying for both of those right now so that I can make sure that I can get you guys the high quality art streams. Cause there's a lot of people who um, are gonna see a thumbnail with the art in it and they're gonna wanna check it out, you know? Uh, oh, that. Uh, let me see if I can get this. Uh, that's how I got to meet Andy Smith. I live in the same town, you are kidding me. <laughs> that is awesome. Andy, you know this, Andy drew the, um, uh, the cover to my first professional work when I was 17 and he was at the start of his career. He drew uh, the cover to Threshers, which is my first book. That's so awesome. Yeah, love Townsend Sark. Absolutely, same here. Um, yeah, you gotta love that stuff, indeed. Um, yeah, I, I just, it was so cool to, to get to talk to Andy and, and, you know, get to, to meet him and get to tell him that firsthand, like how, um, how cool it was, that you know he did the cover of the first uh, book I did. There's a lot of stuff in, um, in this space right now in Comicsgate, in, uh, and I'd include Eric July, of course, and uh, all of the creators doing the things that we do here. Um, that almost seem like they're, they're, you know, written in the stars. It's like, it's crazy. I mean, if you had told me that I would be, um, talking to Andy about his audio setup, you know, cause, uh, I just reached out to him during one of his streams early on and said, Hey man, if you need help, just let me know, dude. And, uh, if you had told me that, that the guy who did my cover when I was 17 on that book, I illustrated I was going to get to know him and he was going to be in comics gate. I wouldn't have believed you guys. It is crazy, man. It is really crazy how like those things, those fortuitous little things happen. And when you put yourself around the right people, I mean, I don't know how, um, in the future, like, I know I'm going to probably be saying, you know, like people will ask me, like, how did you meet like Michael Bancroft? He lives in Australia. And I'll go, it's just, you know, met, uh, he, I found out he was following me on Instagram. And so I followed him back and then, or him or Mel. And, uh, and then I just, you know, reached out to him cause we could message each other. And it was like, Hey, do you want to come on my show and talk? And he didn't know I'd done all those videos for Ethan. And, um, and I didn't know he even knew who the hell I was. So it's just, it's like, it's just one of those crazy things that happens. That's the stuff that makes it fun. You know, there we go. That's starting to look like something. This is going to be fun. So let's see here. Um, yeah, he's a great guy. I've met Billy Tucci. Billy Tucci was nice to me when I met him at a convention uh, when I was in college. And he was just starting out. She was like really just coming on the scene. Um, and Frege at Cons. Yeah, Frege is a great dude. Unbelievable. Um, I've days with those guys. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's the best. I mean, and that's and isn't that what this stuff always used to be? I mean, watching that 2011 interview with, um, with Jason Pearson was was really um it just made me think about how young we both were when i bumped into him at, at gaijin and um and just what a nice dude he was and and I, I i didn't know him well again as i often say it's sort of like um sort of like uh what's his name proximo you know i didn't say i knew him i said he touched me on the shoulder once kind of that thing and um but when i i just was such a huge fan of his stuff and um you know, my friends and I just poured over Savage Dragon, Blood and Guts, and, and all the stuff that he did. And watching that video just reminded me what comics was and what comics can be again. Because it's it wasn't it wasn't the industry that made that. 
it wasn't you know paramount that made the star trek conventions and made conventions in general become such a big thing it was always the fans and this youtube space that we have right now it grew out of the fandom it grew out of who we always have been and that's what i love yeah guys check out um fiendish comic website right there and reenie hail reenie um, another friend of mine in Comics Gate. I haven't talked to Rini in ages, but we both we both draw and we both do draw streams. I gotta reach out and say, hey, Razor Fist Night Veil vale 2, yes guys, check it out. Um, it is a great book. I listen to it all the time. Do you guys wanna see um Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh Michael, you got me, man. What are you doing to me, man, this hour? <sighs> yeah. Uh you all did love him once, not without cause. What cause withholds you then to mourn for him? Rest in peace, Jason Pearson. Love that dude. Rest in peace, Jason Pearson. <sighs> yeah, it got me. I got really emotional when I found out. My buddy, uh, one of my buddies who was knew I was interning uh, there and was a big fan as well in college, uh, were, was messaging back and forth with me about it, and I just it just got me, man. I love that dude, and I love his work, and and uh, his stuff is great, and um, yeah, much love, Jason Pearson. But yeah, when I met Billy Tucci at a con, I begged him not to stop making she because I was loving it. Yeah, and he is, boy, he's making she with a vengeance now, isn't he? That stuff is great. Let me show you a Razor Fist uh, sketch I was just doing. Um, and, and it's probably going to be like a, I might do an art video or something where I just walk people through um, when I do line work with, um, with uh, acrylics here too as well. But yeah, I was messing around with um, acrylic line work the other day, and this will probably... Yeah, do the strobing thing. Unfortunately, just because it's the way, it's the way that it tries to under the camera tries to understand um, light. But this is kind of what it looks like when I do um, hatching stuff in acrylic. I'm kind of work positive and negative. Like uh, I work, um, I work black uh, into the white, and then I work white over the black, just so I can kind of get the 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 kind of the gracefulness that I'm going for when I do this kind of stuff. And I keep my pencils kind of loose and and just try to figure out what I can do. Um, to you know kind of bring something to it but this is actually a sequence from uh, razor fist story that i thought was um that i thought was really cool and, and it gave me an idea for um for an ink drawing so i just started uh sketching <laughs> thanks maddie fowler much love brother uh i do appreciate that and thank you Stephen rockwood i do appreciate that guys much love really but it's it's the way i i think about this kind of stuff I always think about it in terms of acrylic and paint, and I, and I like to have an additive, subtractive um, process when I'm doing it. So it's weird. Like all of this stuff is is in my um, is in my painting stuff. Like I know you guys know because you look at my you look at my painting stuff while I do it, but you can totally see the sensibilities of both. You know, like they're um, I don't change how I draw when I paint. I just change up a little bit. Like because you guys have seen um, you guys have seen on. Um, uh, my Denzel Washington portrait I posted on Twitter and um, you know so I, I do uh, portraits and things like that as well and I love that oh my gosh yeah I I have um, Marcus you'll you'll know this I have the um, Bernie Wrights an artifact edition over there like propped up on top of one of my desks open so I can flip through it I love it so much um how do I do I'm trying to read sorry and that's you guys know me in reading how do you do your pencils? Are you using graphite sticks? No, I use a um, I use a uh, lead holder. So I use um, and I just got a sharpener because I keep breaking the sharpeners, man. Uh, I drop them and then the interior breaks. But I use one of these. I use HB lead in this kind of lead holder, and then I use a um, a lead holder sharpener. Let's see if hopefully it won't break. There we go. And it's great because I can get that really surgical point on it and uh and don't drop that kids by the way don't drop that on your foot um but uh but that's the thing for me right so i use i use that with an hb lead and that's the fun thing um <laughs> like how are you into well you know well there's a little bit of everything in me man uh yeah <laughs> yeah i'm i'm uh was it what did i tell somebody one time because uh one of my parents was catholic the other one was hindu and i said i'm a calf do and they said uh why are you a calf do uh, and I said, well, because the other alternative is to be a Heimlich. And I don't want to do that. That's not the way to do it. Um, <laughs> caught back up. It's good to see you, John. Yeah, Michael Bagger from The Simpsons. You guys are killing me. Marcus got my joke. There you go. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, my wife is in the other room going, how many more times do I have to hear that joke? 
Well, until I'm dead. That's the way it works. Uh, let's see here. Where is my blue paint? There it is. Oh, guys, my son, thank you to my son Mwah, for getting me this uh, this uh, book reading stand. It makes life so much easier when I'm painting. You guys are going to benefit from it because I can just reach to my paints on my desk. I don't have to have a separate section set up because it doesn't take any desk space. It keeps the book elevated. I can flip through it, which is so cool. I might even do something in the future where uh, I just do a video like flipping through a book and talking about it. If you guys think you might want to look at some of my art books. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Come again. Uh, I know you love it, Michael. I know. Listen, my wife wanted me. Um, yeah, I know how you feel, Marcus, because I know how you feel. That's right, man. Amen. That's how it is, man. That's that's what these people don't understand. It's 2000 and like, uh, it's 2023 and they're still trying to talk like we're living in like the 1800s. We're all down already with this stuff. We're all cool. We Shoot, man, when you go into a comic convention, you're more likely, and when you hang out with real comic fans, you're more likely to get into an argument over one of you being a DC fan and one of you being a Marvel fan back in the day than anything else because you are just excited to meet a fellow fan. And when artists get together, forget about it. When artists get together, all we do is talk talk shop, you know, and and that's what it is. It's talking about printers and talking about brushes and what we just did five seconds ago. What do you use when you're penciling? What do you use when you're penciling? That's what it is. Yeah, graphite sticks so that they can visualize line weights better. Who was I looking at? I think it was. Um, I think Razor Fist was talking about the um, the artists who did the interior illustrations on. Um, on the shadow and talking about how a lot of them used the graphite sticks. Um, I could be wrong, but I think he was saying some of them used ink and some of them used graphite sticks, uh, which are really cool. I, I have a tendency to, um, I'm like a natural, uh, which took me a while cause I was for the longest time I was terrified of paint, but I'm a natural sort of uh, painter. And so I tend to, whenever I want to wash something back or gray it out, I always want to use paint. But never say never. You know, never say never. There's some there's some really cool um, tools that people are coming up with all the time. Like, uh, what's it called? Um, pan pastels, man. Pan pastels are crazy good. Crazy good. You know? And, uh, oh my gosh, 35 people watching, 25 likes. You guys are crushing it today. Thank you so much. Um, holy crap. Um <laughs> Oh my god. You guys are hilarious. Yeah, and amen. See, Marx knows what I'm talking about, man. You know what I'm talking about. But it's there's there's so many there's just so many materials, man. There's there's so many materials um that uh that that are out there that I just think, you know, try whatever you're in the mood to try. Like I work I do stuff in digital. If you watch um Michael, don't watch it too much because it'll it'll seriously it will like it will bend your brain in half. Um but the guy I was talking about, Andrew Tischler, does landscape paintings, and he draw sketches out his compositions in pencil, and then he um, does a full tonal and color in Photoshop. He draws them digitally and then blows those things up, man. Shave, behave, shave. <laughs> you kill me. Good morning, Scottsley, my friend. It's great to see you, brother. I hope you are doing well. Terrific to see you in the chat, my friend. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's um, Andrew. Uh, when he shows his process, he he draws out of his head. He brings the stuff into Photoshop. I mean, he is he is something, man. He is something. Another artist from the land down under. He grew up in Perth, though I think. So he's way on the other side. A lot of people have no concept of how large Australia is. It's a it's a fascinating thing. I'm like, that is a massive continent. Um, and. Uh, I know a lot of it's not inhabitable, but it doesn't change the flight time between Perth and uh, Sydney. That's for sure. That is a trip. That is a trip. That's it we got here. Mmm, coffee on a cold and rainy. Is there anything better? There is not anything better. Um, it's not the size of the wand. It's the magic in it. Look at you guys starting trouble at this hour, wherever you are. Scott Seva uh, tries out all sorts of art supplies on his channel. Isn't it, a, isn't it satisfying to watch people do that? Like just work on different things. Australia is about the same land um, is about the same landmass as U.S. Right? I forget what the comparison is. Michael might know better than I know. I think it's it's pretty. I want to say it's exact, but it's pretty comparable, um, more so than we would think, because we're used to seeing it warped by the maps. 
we don't always get the the full sense of how serious of a landmass it is and of course i i know um the only thing i ever think about when it comes to uh the land down under is i am um absolutely obsessed with the idea of uh, somebody either in papua new guinea or tasmania finding a tasmanian uh tiger or a thylacine i should say uh still alive i'm obsessed with thylacines i think it's just one of the coolest things in the world uh, those are some outstanding animals. I will absolutely want to use something like that in a story, in a future story, because I just think the look of them is just so incredible. Such cool uh, animals. Michael Minecraft, um, comparable to the continental U.S., not including Alaska. There you go. There you go. Um, the joy of this new YouTube app, you can keep listening to streams while on lock screen. Yes, I know. I love that. Um, as you travel, um, as you travel apart, only problem is it drains your phone battery. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, Timmy. I, I do that all the time. I listen to streams while I'm like doing dishes or doing whatever else I got to do or building a desk. And it, it's become, you know, we do both, um, up to the, uh, up to the viewer, I should say, but we do both, uh, the things that we do can be both a podcast and a show, both. Like you don't have to pick and choose if you do, um, if you make a show, where you paint, people can listen to it and then they can go back and watch it, which is one of the coolest things about it. Because, you know, we always have... The thing I love about what we're doing on this channel is we always have good conversations and it always gets you thinking. And it just helps... It, it helps the time to go by, you know what I mean? It helps the it helps the time go by, but it also helps pass the time in a way um, that is, is something that puts fuel in your tank and doesn't take it out of your tank. It doesn't leave you feeling you know, lower, which is why, again, like in 2010, when I made that Speakeasy Studios logo in pen and ink um, and gouache, I called it Speakeasy Inspiration Preserve. Because even then, you know, working in, in education, I just realized how hard it was to, to not get drug into all of the pointless bureaucratic stuff. And uh, now that I'm, I'm, you know, here on YouTube, it's, I've realized, wow, there's even more ability to, to get the most out of that idea of an Inspiration Preserve. But also, um, you know, to to share that with more people and get people in a in a good place starting out in the morning. D Wag, my man, look, I love D Wag, so I've got to do this. D Wag, even though you haven't sent a super chat, um, you're a super chat in and of yourself. So let me play this for you, D Wag. <laughs> Charge! I love seeing you in the in the chat, brother. I love seeing you in the chat. You're the man. Um, it is great to see you. You know, yeah, Alaska put us over the top. That's right. Um, yeah, um, the thing people don't understand about the pyramids is that, that it isn't just their height. <laughs> Shave, stop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are cracking me up. Yes, check out Darren Wagner's uh, YouTube channel. Proje um, it's crazy how much map projections can distort. Um, Mercator projection is most common, exaggerates as you move from the equator. Yes, indeed. Yep. Darren Wagner's YouTube channel. Hail D. Wagner. There's a lot of love. Drugs uh, will end you. Don't get drug in. Laugh out loud. There you go. Charge indeed, Scottsley. Much love, y'all. That's right. Love for D-Wag. Michael Bancroft saying, yo, D-Wag. Yeah, there's always love for D-Wag, man. One of my favorite uh, Comic Skate memories was when D-Wag was out walking around some parking lot in the middle of the night on Jeremy's uh, channel. And I was just like, this guy is a freaking star. He's awesome. <laughs> it's just, I loved it. It was such great stuff, man. That's, that's the stuff that is, we're so free to experiment with, um, with the kind of stuff we want to make here. And, and thank goodness, because, you know, um, if we get too, you know, standardized and things like that, and we don't just sort of move toward in the direction of excellence, there's nothing we can't do together, man. Like, we're just going to keep, keep pushing things as far as we can, because I love, I, I love what I do you know, in terms of, um, being able to share it with you guys. And, um, it, it really is something that reminds me of going to the comic shop. It reminds me of, you know, some of my favorite memories of when I was in college back in the day when I was a student and we would talk about, you know, art and things like that. And the fact that there really aren't a lot of places like that anymore where you can go and have a free conversation, um, means that we have to build our own stuff. And that's really what it is, right? Parallel economy, but also I would say, um, parallel spaces for fans to hang out with and maybe that's going to be one of the most lasting contributions of what we do here for building this stuff and making the best comic book work and it cannot be um overstated that 
getting more comfortable and getting more efficient at your YouTube game by figuring out what it is you want to talk about, what it is that's the most fun for you to do, is a huge part of building this parallel economy because it's not, we don't just make the artwork. We have to, as Michael was talking about, and congratulations again to Michael, um, the second printing of the Lucent first issue is going to uh, the printer, I believe. It's being printed right now. That is the thing that's always a part of it. It's the shows. I mean, geez, I, it feels like it was just five minutes ago, but Michael and I did an impromptu show about reader response theory. It's crazy. Um, I, um, I lurk and, and hear <laughs> Derek Heiner super chatted on E, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. See, there you go. Oh, my God. Lots of love. American Comics Company. You're always in good company with American Comics Company. Teflon Ron. Um, hmm, a thylacine werewolf? Listen, man, it, I have painted thylacines a bunch, and I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's cool. You guys are so funny, man. Oh, my gosh. But, yeah, I mean, anytime, anytime I can make this stuff and make, you know, this work, I feel as though it's like, uh, you know, you'd go to a convention, and sometimes you would occasionally see. It wasn't often, but, um, but when, before... Um, and when you went to the smaller conventions, you could sometimes catch a creator working on a deadline for a book and you could actually see the pages getting drawn. And I actually like that aspect that, you know, I'm drawing something that you can buy. I mean, the link to Nosfero uh, is in the description. You guys are always posting the link in here, but it's, it's not just something that you're seeing. It's something that you can also go and buy. And that's the other cool part of it. Like it's, a, it's an actual physical thing. So it starts out on the screen with you guys hovering closer to the board than I'm hovering to the board. Uh, you guys have a better view than I do sometimes. And then it turns into something that you are going to be able to hold in your hand. And it'll be a physical, you know, um, physical book that you can flip through. And you'll go, my gosh. And I'll tell you this. Here's what I'm curious about. Um, when when I get this proof copy back, when it gets, when it gets done... Um, but when I get this proof copy back, I wonder how weird it's going to be to see the artwork reduced... And I wonder how it's going to feel to you guys from your perspective. Do you know what I mean? Because you guys are right up on top of it too. So I'm wondering if you guys are just going to be like shocked at like, whoa, that got even more detailed than I thought it was going to be. Do you know what I mean? Um, was in the Darren Wagner who wrote the article um, years ago, like 2000 or so, probably. There you go. Look at that, guys. Uh, John Perth made a video of that with me. Um, uh, time traveling in the dumpster. Oh my God. Why Why am I not at all surprised? Yeah, he did a comic series with Clint Helinski. Oh my gosh, in the late 90s. Nice. Yeah, I just... Uh, it's going to be really interesting to get you guys' take uh, on... on Like, did it look how, you know, in terms of scale, uh, what things were surprising to see when you get it printed up and in your hands. It's going to be so cool. That's a big part of it, you know. I mean, I'm wondering because, you know, I actually... I don't know if I've ever... I don't know if I've gone back and watched or remember watching as much the Cyberfrog streams for the first issue, but I've watched a ton of streams of Ethan drawing the second issue because um, I was watching the first issue streams, but so much was going on at that time. It doesn't even seem real now when I think about it. Um, but I wonder um, if there's any drawings I'm going to be just, it's going to be weird to see that he worked on um, and that I saw them so often small. I can't wait to get that book, man. I love... Um, What's the character? I always blank on his name. It's not Shock Roach. It's um, it's the big red character. What is the big red character's name that he illustrates? It's really cool. Yeah, Gene Colan is totally Todd McFarlane's hero and one of my heroes uh, by proxy. Used to draw his pages while we were in class at SVA. Marcus, that is... Oh, you... Dude. Respect, man. Respect. Yeah, what a legend. What a legend. What is that name of that giant character? It's like a dragon, like kind of thing. It's like, um, shoot, I feel like I should know what the character's name is, and it's just like missing. It'll, it'll, it's not Scorpion. I don't think it's. No, who is it? What is the name of that character? Oh, Darren Wagner Zaid Studios is working on Beckoned, indeed, guys. Check it out, and that is one of my favorite things. Scorpion, you've got it. I think that's who it is. Scorpion, you've got it. Yes, indeed, guys. Yeah, check out Beckend, guys. Let's, let's keep moving that book. Keep backing that book. Yes. I think you've absolutely got it. Yeah, it is a... Isn't that character cool looking? Uh, there was a page he showed, and I thought the tech in it... And I think I sent him a... Uh, I emailed him about that. I was like, dude, that is... That's some next level stuff. That's a beautiful, beautiful character. And his... um, So many of these characters that Ethan's... um 
you know, kind of reworking and reimagining for the more serious story now. I mean, boy, he's bringing he's bringing a lot to the new designs. I mean, I love the I as much as cool as I know um, and how much affection people have for the first uh, version of Cyberfrog. Um, to me, the newest new Cyberfrog design is just Chef's kiss, man. It's good stuff. That's my favorite Cyberfrog. That's I. That's the action figure that I got was the um, the uh, Cyberfrog, um, mo current era. I don't know what it's called actually. If it's modern versus, you know, past. I forget what the names were for them, but I love that. New design's great. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, grab. Oh, yes, yeah, grab Tiger Blue and more on Retro Graphics Bookstores. That's right, guys. Parallel Economy. Let's keep making it happen. Got to create our own storefronts and all of that stuff, too, just to make sure we got our, ourselves taken care of. Let them uh, let them collapse. You know, push us out of that burning building if you want to. But I, I don't think the tech sector, if anybody in the tech sector is paying attention, really don't think it's a good idea for them to be uh, limiting who's allowed to use their uh, services because they might find themselves uh, in a world of trouble in terms of financially. Because uh, the I don't know about them, but the economy to me is not uh, so outstanding that you can turn customers away uh, just because you want to. Uh, so I don't know what world they're living in. But it doesn't seem to me to be a very smart idea. But that's why we're here and they're there. People haven't even seen this. And actually, oh, you know what was really great? Was um, I heard Shane Davis saying something that I, I really um, believe and I've been saying for a while. And it was just nice to hear someone else say that the other night where he was talking about, um, you know, uh, how he does not, he will always uh, sell your you know, from his website your opportunity to get Inglorious Rex. It is going to be more expensive because he said, uh, why would I make it cheaper or the same price? for people who didn't back it during the campaign when I needed it the most. And I went, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, let me see here. Now I got a job in the phone company in the 90s, but I've tried to keep doing art over the years. That's how you do it, man. Yeah, I love Ethan's detail work, John. You're absolutely right. Um, at DWAG, uh, oh, whoops, hold on, click on it. Uh, did you get uh, the Kiefer Sutherland joke? I <laughs> found on page, man. There you go. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I mean, I to me, that's... I, that's how you should do it because, you know, your backers are the people who are with you. They're the ones making this uh, this incredibly grueling work of being, you know, a creator in, in, you know, the parallel economy. They're the people who make it, you know, as as unpainful as is possible. And uh, it just would be a weird thing not for, for them to be the ones who, who are bearing the, you know, <laughs> who aren't being rewarded, frankly for uh, having your back when you're launching a property. So it was it was great to hear Shane say that because I think it's just, you know, that's how it's got to be. Those folks who were there for you. Dance with the one who brought you, as they say. There we go. Make that column a little bit darker. I'm going to pull highlights out of that thing as well, but I want to make sure I get just I want to make sure I get that space a little bit better right there with it and you can kind of see how we're we're going to start making like I'm going to go in and put the details there good morning Zade Studios guys the amazing genius creative talent behind Beckoned there is the link for it DWAG is quick on the draw there it's great to see you in the chat Zade Studios hail Zade Studios and there of course there of course is uh, the link from DWAG let's get going guys one of my favorite covers i've ever done one of my favorite paintings i've ever done is only going to be available on the cover of that book beckon so if you're a shanth and jetty completist if you like this work and you are saying i want to have one of the most exceptional examples of shanth's artwork that is available in comicsgate back that book now beckoned recourse make it happen absolutely right man absolutely right you're very welcome Zay. much love you're very welcome um it is uh yeah it's it's really cool to see that level of craft being done in our space you know and it's it's we've got so many people who are 
um, that all of you guys should be very proud uh, to uh, to have backed and to have made a um, a place where they can come as creators to do you know world class work because that's what we're really trying to do here. We're trying to create stuff that stands the test of time. When I talk to my uh, studio mate who grew up in New York and uh, is friends with um, artist Mike Kaluta and people like that, he talks about things like the release of the studio book and how it was a hard to find book and you know it was like a big deal when you finally got it and all of that stuff and I said that's what we're doing here we're doing like these are the first printings of books that are going to be something people are talking about I mean Bernie Wrightson um, God rest him didn't know what a big influence he had had until much later on with Frankenstein but if you make something that is of incredible quality and that you put a lot of time into and make something that's really beautiful it's gonna it's gonna have a huge impact and that's what we're really trying to do here. You know, we're trying to make books that people are going to look at in the, you know, Warren Publishing, you know, uh, kind of sense, at least for me, that are going to be really, you know, um, just incredible works of craft. And, and we're not trying to make, um, we're not trying to make cheap stuff here. We're trying to make great stuff here. We're really making books and we're making beautiful books. And again, guys, check out the Lucent book one, check out Beck and Recourse, check out Shane Davis's and Glorious Rex too, guys. That's what we got to do. Absolutely right. Hales Aid Studios. Yeah, Snatch caught uh, caught the bundle. Um, first crack out of the box. That's right. Absolutely right, man. Uh, let's see. Who am I missing here? Oop. Yep, grab the Shanth cover. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, please do grab that cover and support that book. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, of course. Always good vibes in here, Moss. You know that. I'm sorry you're having a bad day. Um, grab that cover. Had to. Michael, I think that's your favorite piece. Like, Michael was talking to me about art one time, and I said, yeah, if I ever do a... Um, if I ever do a piece, yeah, Merca, indeed. If I ever do a um, a piece for um, for uh, Michael, like an actual like piece, I know what he wants. I know how detailed it's going to be. It's going to have to be insane. Yeah, I it just put it this way: I'm both excited at the prospect and utterly exhausted because I know what I'm I'm going to do. I mean, in terms of yeah, it's going to be serious. Um, I I think I am more uh i feel more um more of a sense of of difficulty degree of difficulty in making an Im that uh an image for michael for the lucent than i do about issue two of nosfero how's that for uh <laughs> how's that for an interesting uh interesting uh perspective right there and i don't mean in the painting although there's the perspective starting to happen that's good uh Shave causing trouble. <laughs> oh, indeed. Yeah, that's what you got to do, guys. Yeah, that's how we do it, man. Yeah, look at all this. The pressure. I know. Well, it's, it's. You know what it is. Um, and yours was the same way when I was working on your cover because, and you know, I would say that there are a couple of jobs that have been very high pressure. One of them was, the double page spread I did for Malin's Visions book. Uh, that's going to be with, I guess it's going to be with Godlike. I, that, because I was doing my own characters and I wanted to make sure, or my own character in that case, and my world, and I wanted to kind of, um, I really wanted it to be something that lived up to what I was seeing there. But um, for the cover for Jeremy of Zade, um, when I see artwork, and it's something the Lucent definitely has in common um, with you on that score, that is of a certain kind of kindred spirit in terms of its craft and in terms of its uh, the richness of the narrative world, um, I want to create that almost literary level of, of complexity and, and visual density. I want The same that you see in literature, I want to try to create in the artwork itself. So um, the thought process gets to be a lot more lyrical, a lot more poetic, and it has to be, it has to read, but it also has to kind of flow. Uh, it's got to have a kind of symphonic quality, and I think if you guys look at the the um, the cover I did, and I hope you will back it um, for for um, Beckend uh, from Zade Studios, uh, Beckend Recourse. I think you guys will see what I'm talking about because it is a seriously complicated piece, um, and I know that painting. Um, I would not have done that for just anybody, and I know that painting has a really good home with Jeremy. So you guys know that I don't part with a lot of my originals, but when it's um, particularly when it's for somebody who is um, 
who's pouring so much of themselves into a book. It's it's the place it's supposed to be. That's where it's supposed to be living. go that's coming together <laughs> no I don't think so um, he's got it hung up in the studio shows it off to every stream oh I'm so glad D-Wag D -Wag, you always bring positivity man and thank you Zade it was an honor doing that man it was an honor doing that you guys are the best man um, oh my god that's awesome if only I knew how to add people to the broadcast uh, <laughs> in Ecamm I don't know how to do it yet I've got to work on it, man. And of course, dude, much love. You know that. You know that, man. I love that you guys are, are drawn to. I hope you guys, like, I hope that everybody, um, you know, checks out these these art streams and things like that because um, they're really fun. They're really, I think they can be really great and meditative for you. Um, I always, when I'm talking to my, my son about stuff, I always go, you know, if you want to unwind and, like, watch something that's going to really put, you know, fuel in your tank, Watch streams like, you know, Townsend's. Watch streams like what we're doing here, which is, you know, people just kind of working, you know. When I, you know, one of my favorite uh, quotes in the world is, idle hands are the devil's workshop. And I think it's, it's, and I probably butchered that quote, but I think it's true because when you're doing something, you're not in your head. You're not overanalyzing things. You're not overthinking things. And, um, you know, watching people make work, seems like it helps to still the mind a little bit and you get into this kind of um, meditative space. There we go. There we go. Now that book is coming together. I love painting things like magic, man. That's right. So, and that's another great one. I'm going to go tweet it out. Be right back. There you go. Drawn Brothers. That's what it's about, Mighty Magic. Uh, Shanth, if you and Bancroft collabed, he draws digitally. How would you paint it? Um, print it off. Um, is there um, a special printer ink you'd work with? Oh, boy. Like that, I'm not so sure Like how I would do it. I might do... Um, it really depends on how detailed it would be because um, I would probably just do a, um, a transfer of it, but that's the trick right because i would want to make sure i kept as much of the character of what he did in there so i that would just have to be i think on a case by case you know like i'd have to look at the artwork to see how it how it comes together um yeah there you go there you go don't think just do <laughs> if you think you're dead yeah absolutely right but i yeah i mean i think i'd have to just put it there um and see what i did um i heard they found a 50-foot scroll in Egypt from 50 BC of Shant's Painted Manifesto. Yeah, that's true. His work is truly timeless. Yeah, that is true. It did travel through time. Okay, so um, transfer can mean any number of things. I could use an Artograph DB400 opaque projector to uh, project the drawing down onto the board and then trace it by hand. I could um, ink over it and then use a, a Pan Pastel transfer. So I put some Pan Pastel on the back of tracing paper lay it down and then um, re-ink over what I inked so that I could transfer it that way. And of course, one of the easiest ways is you print it out on a surface and then you just paint on that surface. The trick is the surface would have to be stable enough to where I knew it could handle my acrylics without loss of um, loss of skill. And good morning, Cranberry Langers. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the kind words, my friend. Happy Sunday to you. It is great to see you, my friend. Yes, indeed. Everybody's saying hello when Cranberry Langers is up in the chat. And there's the YouTube channel link, guys. Check out Cranberry Langers. That's how we get things done. Yeah, that's how we get things done, guys. Indeed. Yeah, the page uh, the page is crazy. And Cranberry Langers, just so you know, channel member, 
uh, Cranberry Lanes, thank you for the kind words there. You have a new emoji that you can use of the speakeasy. I finally got it uploaded. So that was crazy. So I wanted to do that in Yoko's last night. There you go, guys. So feel free to uh, use that new emoji all of you channel members have of the speakeasy, man. That was the fun thing. And thank you guys for coming in here and hitting the like and watching this thing, man. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, like I said, um, I mentioned this to you guys a lot, but the easier I make things on this end with getting the desk, you know, finally sorted and uh, bolted together and then putting the new book holder up, the better it's going to be for my streaming because it frees up how much I can do. And uh, and this has been, oh my gosh, the, the new desk setup, thanks to my son, has been um, been really great for what I'm doing. So shout out to him. You know, that's definitely been something that's added a lot to what I'm able to do. You know, it makes the lighting easier. It makes um, the storage of the paint easier. All of that stuff. There we go. We're getting there, guys. Now we're cooking. And it's, you know, so much happens on the spread because this spread is really showing you a lot of things. It's got the creation of the ring. It's got the creation of the sword that Nosferu uses, even though he's uh, not on the scene yet. Um, and uh, so many of these things are kind of like the, the creation of the world and of the mythos, and that's what I've been working on. Yeah, Sean's still considering a standing desk for your workflow. I might at some point. The pig! Yeah, that's right. That's the speakeasy pig. Hail and Jetty Spawn. You're absolutely right, man. Um, layouts and Sean's painted pages for reference from those layouts. Yeah, there's all sorts of craziness that I'm going to be doing, man. Uh, it is going to be some wild, wild stuff as we do this. I mean, I'm... I, I'm telling you what, guys, it's the ability to move things around now and show you guys all of the crazy stuff that I'm working on on a spread like this. This is so much fun. And just the depth, guys. Look at the depth I can get in a small panel now with all this stuff. I mean, this is what it's about, guys. This is like we're doing some really, really cool stuff in this space. And people people are going to catch on, man. People are going to catch on. They're going to figure out. Uh, and one artist I want to make sure I, I mention who is a huge huge influence on my work and the artist I saw in college where I said why can't we make comics that are that cool and you know painted with texture and I didn't even know how to paint then so I was kind of hoping someone else would do it um, was uh, Mobius Mobius is Arzak and I have Mobius is Arzak over there and there was a um, I loved the way that he did um, he did stonework I always thought it was so so cool and so you'll see me do a lot of stonework um, texturing like Mobius does, you know, when I'm doing my work. So you'll definitely see that. But big Mobius influence, big um, Alphonse Mucha influence, and of course, um, a, a hearty dose of uh, Frank Frazetta, because Frizzetta, I only got into Frank when I was, um, Frazetta's work when I was in my 30s, really, which is funny to think about. But I was looking for him, I feel like, all my life. When I finally found it. I was like, holy cow, this is what I've been looking for. There we go. Yeah, this is starting to this is starting to be something here. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean that was that was the the missing link. Like every time I look at this uh, a spread and I look at a page, I see it as an opportunity uh, to add story to it and to think about how I can add story to it. And I also think about it without like how do I word this? I think about the stuff that I'm doing very often from the standpoint of how I think the creators back in the day you know, the, the, the top tier creators back in the day thought about it, which was um, thinking about it in terms of, let me see if I can adjust that. There you go. Thinking about it in terms of how do I create something that is timeless that people are going to look at and go, whoa, like look at the impact of this. Yeah, Muka is the man. I love the Slav epic for anybody who knows that work of his, those giant tapestries. Those are absolutely amazing. But just take a look at the scope and the space that you're getting in this image. You know, you're going to open up this double page spread and it's just going to be, holy cow. I mean, the creature that is being summoned that they're going to, uh, that Amun al Hazared is going to um, take the eyes out of. And one of those eyes is going to be placed inside of a character that we will find out about later uh, to give birth to this creature. And another one is used to hold and give the book its power. And that's what it is. Um, Yes, it is. The story lore is getting deeper in my head. And when when push comes to shove, though, the lore is so important and it's definitely gotten rich, richer throughout the creation of this book. But I, I always think about it this way, that um, that 
I always try to reduce everything back down to um, back down to pulp. So I go, all right, the lore can get you know really rich, really deep, but make sure the visuals are really fun and really playful, so that when people see them, they just get that sense of play. You know, yes, I absolutely am going to be looking at catch up campaigns or eBay's for those who miss the campaign and demand. You're absolutely yes, that has to happen. I agree with what Shane and everybody's saying. And again, welcome Cranberry Langer's channel member. Um, yes, ah, the miss creature. You're absolutely right. Um, this is the thing I've been thinking about, right? Is that, um, Ethan says this, Shane says this, uh, John says this, I think, or does John say this? I don't know if this is a John thing, but it kind of is. And I think your boy Zach says this a lot too, but always keep your stuff in print. That's, that's your steady income. That's how you're going to build that equity because there's no way, like this is the hardest part of the creative process from, uh, and any business, you guys know a lot of you guys own businesses or have owned businesses. It's going from zero to and breaking static friction to movement. If it wasn't for backers, we could not do this. There's no way we could do this as pre-orders. It's way too risky. I would not put my family through that. Um, only Comicsgate and you guys who back these books are are make this possible. So don't ever forget that, guys. I won't ever forget that because it's 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 our it's my family for God's sake. Like that's why this stuff is so important uh, to me. I mean, it's like my family is everything and you guys help us so much you know um indeed uh yeah ah miss creature there you go and then uh no i don't think malin says that but he does say don't do it the way he does so yeah well and i think he he does the um he does the uh the disney vault method which is get it while it's out i will release it every so often and if you miss it you miss it which i think is a really good business strategy i actually was hearing a lot of people talk about that being one of disney's biggest financial um or business model mistakes that worked so well for them, which was the Disney vault, you know, which was the idea that, you know, you would see it in a movie theater, then it would be released um, on home video, and then you would miss it until the next release. And it built up uh, demand, and it also made them generational works. I think that's very much the case with what we're doing here. You know, we're trying to make generational works. You know, yeah, Rarity, you're absolutely right. Yeah, Ethan definitely says keep your stuff in circulation. Yeah, I mean, and everybody keeps adding to it. That's why I'm so excited about Michael's site, you know. Um, it's it's so, so important, you know, to do that kind of stuff and to do that kind of work. Um, are you getting more commissions, Sean? When's the last commission I did? Um, which are the commissions I can talk about? I, I haven't done any commissions lately. Um, and and I it's subject to the, the time, but I have two paintings that I have done, actually a couple paintings that I've done, people have offered me money for. So it's weird. It's like, um, uh, I'm either doing a commission or I'm doing, you know, paintings and those paintings are selling, but yeah, I'm curious to see what my next, what my next commission is going to be. It'll be interesting to see, but right now I'm, I'm loving this stuff right now. You know, I want to definitely, I'll tell you a commission I want to do. I want to definitely do something, um, for the Ripperverse. And, you know, I, I know two guys who work there and, and, uh, Gabe's always like going, Oh, I'll talk to him for you, you know, and he's a terrific guy. And, um, so yeah, it, it all happens. Like it's so funny. It's words cannot describe the madness of uh, all of this. But yeah, I never know where it's gonna go. Right now, beckoned recourse is where it's at, guys. You know, if you want to get that book. Oh, and I should say, uh, the back cover to um, to Boots and Heels as well. You know, and that's another original that's for sale. Um, Aaron is doing a reprint of Wraith of Oh Wraith of God with a new cover campaign. That's awesome. Yeah, I got the um, the Simon Bisley cover for Wraith of God too, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Oh, hold on, just jumped. Oh, the paintings uh, slash commissions are separated. Yes, if I do something recreational and people buy it, yeah. Get Gabe to restart Players Club. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'll have to talk. Yeah, I'll talk to him about that. Oh, I think right now he's been just working his tail off, but I'm going to have to reach out to him. Um, but yeah, sometimes I just do... Um, when we talk, Whenever we talk, we talk about action movies. It's really... <laughs> now we're, we're in that zone but um that that or his granddaughter so those are the things those are the big things that we've been talking about a lot lately whatever we do we talk about in our group text so it's so funny but um but yeah i mean my next um i want to be doing more pulp stuff so i definitely want to do um some cover commissions for books at some point but i really want to keep it's a small audience at the moment although it's not like there's a lack of money in it per se um, but you know, there could always be more, but I want to do more iron age stuff. It, I'm really trying to hold true to that because, uh, I want to make sure that, that, you know, 
my time is being put into something that is that we're all a part of. Um, the most valuable thing associated um, with Nosferu is the pencil sketches. So you want still want to keep those? Yes, that's true. Actually, um, let me see here. I'd like a combination of the two: the work circulating and special runs rare. Yep, I agree with that too. Um, I don't think the players' club is done. I just don't think they're they've done it in a bit because that's people it's the holidays threw everybody for a loop and everybody is like swamped right now, man. But yeah, break for the holidays. You're absolutely right. Uh, let's see. I'm at work right now, Phil. Oh, how's work, man? Hope things are doing well. Play games then, said John. There you go. Yeah, I mean, it is... Whew. I look at this stuff and, and look at the things that we're doing and I'm thinking, if I can just keep... Like, I might do... I, there's a, You guys know full well I've got a lot of limited things that I can do uh, that I've been considering with Nosferu a lot that you guys have suggested and seem like common sense things like an art only edition and things like that with no text on it. So there's going to be any chance we can um, have to exploit this, you know, work that I'm doing and make the most we can from it to fuel other stuff we're doing. We're going to do. So you guys don't have to worry because this is a capitalist outfit. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a capitalist outfit, so you know we're always going to be making stuff. But we want to make sure the stuff that we make is cool. And it's stuff that you guys are excited about and that you're into. And so those are the things I hear people talking about. Heck, it might even be just an art only with um, all the hand-done layout pages that I do. Which, I didn't do hand-done layout pages for every page of the book. But there are a ton of those. And I know people want those. There we go. Yeah, oh, this page is going to be sick, man. Um, have you made a contract with a drink with crazy? He's big on promoting Iron Age stories. Oh, have I made contact? No, I don't think I have. And I'm not sure what that is, man. Yeah, Gabe is, Gabe's always got a lot going on. God bless him. John, I sit and watch Sean during work. That's right. You guys are hilarious, man. Yeah, hurrah for capitalism indeed. Yeah, team no, I'm trying to stay team no side. Let's see here. I like the art you've been putting up on Twitter and channel members post. Oh, there's more cool channel member stuff coming today. I want to check that out. A drink with crazy. Have all of you guys heard of that? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, Michael's got, can throw a link. Absolutely. Yeah, throw a link for that. But I have not heard of that. I feel like, um, oh, there's so much great stuff going on, guys. These are, def this is definitely um, the Iron Age of this stuff all starting up. That's for sure. I feel like I might have seen it, though, because I think I saw an ISOM review on there. Do you do an ISOM review? Because maybe I saw it, but I don't know. I can't speak for sure on that. I can't speak for sure. Let me see here. All right, cool. Got that. That. And let me get a little bit of warmth on those stairs there. Let me see if they're dry yet. There we go. That's the great thing about um, working with acrylics on this board here is that the dry time and the fact that I can glaze over it once it dried or dries is makes my um, makes me be able to paint at the speed I think at you know and, and helps me to be more creative and more in the moment with what I'm doing and that's 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 gold right there that's important and the same thing again I know I started the stream talking about it but that's the same thing with the desk setup um, if your setup starts getting in the way of your work it's a problem it really it and it's it's something that is always the last thing I think about is how comfortable my setup is for me. I'm more thinking about what can the camera see, what are you guys seeing, what's the quality of it. Yeah, he's a YouTuber, nice guy. There you go, excellent. Everybody saying hello, hello. Yeah, I've seen your work in the members' posts and oh, thank you so much. Ask you for a commission, but my it does take money. But listen, man, you know, reach out. Um, a drink with crazy. There it is, Michael dropping it. Yep, he did. There you go. He did talk about the Ripperverse and Isom. Yeah, I probably have seen his stuff then because I checked that stuff out. Um, I may have to uh, back this a third time uh, to sail those late cards. <laughs> yes, absolutely right. Yeah, uh, listen, I have a feeling that that is going to be the first printing of this is going to be something that, um, yeah, that does all right. Uh, and uh, yeah, because it's just, I know how it works. You know, I mean, first printings are, first printings are first printings. I was looking at... Um, my man, uh, Dan Plagel, is sitting on a pile of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one first printings, which are awesome. But this is, um, I think the biggest thing with this is going to be 
the fact that the print quality is such right now, unlike back in the day, to where first printings just hold up a lot better. You know, you get a first printing of a comic book now, and it's much more like a book. And it's just, ah, uh, man, it's cool stuff. It's cool stuff to be able to make stuff of this quality. I mean, shoot, those Lucent first printings, my gosh, man. There's a whole world Michael's doing there, and I can't help but think those are going to be worth a pretty penny. Okay, so I got that. Got that. And that's moving into this. Look at that, guys. We just did a whole, like, you know, perspective panel right there that I had just, like, you know, had a loose sketch of, you know, got that roughed in. I'm loving this stuff, guys. Um, I'm starting, uh, I'm staring pretty intently <laughs> at the book and the sword and that lady, um, uh, that lady pulling, uh, supporting that blue guy on the left. Yep. You guys are getting this. This is going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot happening in this. There's going to be a lot happening in this. I mean, the whole world of this is just going to be so big. If you like, and I mean this in the sincerest sense, I don't mean this in terms of uh, the aesthetics of it, you know, the um, the pop culture stuff that's made it everywhere of Lovecraft. I'm talking about if you have read yourself some H.P. Lovecraft stories and you love when you see artists visualize Lovecraft. Um... <laughs> okay, Michael, listen, listen. You know full well that unlike my one error that I made with a, this book's launch, when it comes to things with Nosfero, there are people I will always reach out to for their advice, and you are one of those people, man. Um, I would say this about Michael. I'll embarrass him a little bit because I can. I trust that dude with my last dollar. He's just a great dude, man. And yeah, it's going to happen. I know there's going to be an influx of new backers um, once it starts uh, shipping. I, I'm going to see what I do about that. I might just add, keep the campaign open and add a perk that's like a more expensive, you know, like $35 version of the book because... I want to make sure the people who back it while it's active really get their money's worth. Um, Fiendish First Printing are going to sell for more. Like You're absolutely right, man. Absolutely right. Not a single... Yeah, look, there's our... Uh, <clears throat> Stephen Rockwood, <clears throat> I say. It, look, I understand it's common for a lot of people. Um, oh my gosh, look at this. Um, add to broadcast. Super Chat, $5 from Zade Comics. My brother, Sean, have you ever read Miller's Ronin. Yes, I have. I was obsessed with it. Just read issue one and I enjoyed it. I noticed TMNT number one cover was inspired by Ronin number one cover, Iron Age. Yes, I love the Ronin. We had that trade paperback soft cover when I was in high school and we flipped through that thing all the time. But let's get this business taken care of for that $5 super chat. Phil, this is for you. <laughs> Thank you, brother. That one is for you. Agent Zero Studios, it is great to see you. How are you doing this fine Sunday? I hope you're doing well. Or Monday, depending on if you're in Australia, of course. Uh, like my brother Michael is. Um, everybody's saying hello, hello. I hope Rini commissions you to do a cover. Yeah, if Rini commissions me to do a cover, I'm there, man. It's like, I, like I said, I'm a capitalist. If people have got money and they're doing something in the Iron Age, I'm game. I'm ready to work. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I love, yeah. This is a descriptive narrative. I was listening to um, The Hound the other day. And there are certain uh, certain qualities to it, you know, that I that just the descriptive nature of it that is so cool. Uh, there you go, people saying hello and good day. Uh, good idea, yes, indeed. Yeah, I, it has to be done. Incentivize. Yeah, I want people who back this book to be rewarded, and you can always add another perk, you know. But that's important. Well enough, I'm working on getting my campaign up for Indiegogo to launch on February third. Excellent, excellent. Congratulations on that. Uh, much excitement. Yeah, absolutely, man. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I think that um, my personal take on this stuff is that um, you got to do it. Sometimes it's like ripping the Band-Aid off, right? Um, let's see. You will scare yourself drawing a Lovecraft creature based on the description. Yeah, you aren't kidding. Um, there's going to be a lot of pissed off people when Nosferu comes out being like, why didn't I back this? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think... Um, uh, you, I think you saw that a lot with Cyberfrog. You saw that a lot with Isom. Uh, you saw that a lot with Inglorious Rex. You know what was one of the, the sleeper hits that people were like, why didn't I back that, interestingly enough? I thought it was Starlight Cats. I think people were really surprised at how awesome of a story it was, even though a lot of people prefer the concept of Inglorious Rex. Uh, Starlight Cats was a really cool comic skate book. I mean, it was really out of the box, and but it was really a great, you know, great uh, concept 
and story. Uh, and I love that stuff, man. Yeah, the closeness of the wild, savage world to mankind. You're absolutely right. There's a threat in the natural world. Amen. Yeah, that's that's what makes this stuff so cool. That's what makes this stuff so enjoyable is that we get to really bring that ferocity and that savage sort of nature to this work. And, you know, when I'm doing this, <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm working on this page, one of the things I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be having to put in, you know, which I've already kind of designed, the writing on all of these pages in perspective as they kind of flutter around making the making the panel border. Sorry about that, guys. As they flutter around making the panel border. So it's like he's the, the, the book is being created and the pages are going in and binding it, and that's the fun thing. Uh, considering all the stuff Shane's going through, Starlight Cast is probably a breath of fresh air to him. Amen. Yeah, set up a website so that you can sell more copies. Absolutely, too. I do not. Um, I do regret not going for that. Yeah, no, it's, I know. I, I think he's doing some of the most... Innov him and Yonzi are doing some of the most innovative stuff in CG. It's like Michael Michael and Mel, uh, Shane and Yonzi, um, John, of course, first man over the wall. I will always say that. Um, it just is what it is. Um, what Ethan is doing is, is innovative in the sense that he is doing what he's done with YouTube and everything, but he has grown so fast. I think the rest of us can't even keep up. I mean, action figures, uh, PVC figures, nobody comes close to him, man. In terms of the sheer footprint of different kinds of media being made in comics gate, nobody touches Ethan. Ethan's in his own space, man. And that's, that's the cool thing about it. Oh yeah. PTP. That's right. I predict PTP and, uh, and the, uh, Diaz is, will be uh, big in the coming years. I agree with that 100%, man. I've got two of uh, those action figures of his. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. And of course the Diaz is because um, quantity of books and characters. Shoot, uh, Phil owns one of my originals, man. So there you go. Yes, the toys indeed. The toys, they look good. And Glorious Rex appeals to two audiences, MMA fans and Kaiju fans. And I'm a fan of both, man. I asked Shane and Yanzi if they had more titles they were planning on doing. Yeah, there you go. Mail and Militia marches on. No doubt. Never forget. Also, when Kelsey's book finally launches, forget about it. It's going to be great. Yeah. And thanks, Mike, indeed. And NTM. Guys, we are not at a loss for cool stuff coming out in CG right now. Uh, Zaid Comics, I see what you're doing. You can't hide from me. There you go. Yeah, we see the qualities everywhere. Yeah, I'm excited about Kelsey's book, too. Yeah, Kelsey, Kelsey and I have had a couple of phone conversations. He's a nice dude, man. I mean, the, the experience I've had with him, um, you know has always been pretty positive but he also was at gaijin studios like i was so it was nice to kind of talk to him he was there after i was there actually so it was a little bit different by then you know oh i hope pit returns this year too pit returns this year too the other book i'm i'm really excited about is i'm really excited about um gabe's book b flaw um i think that's going to be a really cool project to see because we talk about if you guys don't watch double impact jericho um, Gabe and I, and we talk about movies and things like that. I think, um, beef law is going to be that distilled in comic form. So yeah, look at that Diaz, brother. Look at all the love from here. It's great, man. Yeah. There's some great, great work coming out from us right now, guys. Um, as you may already be able to tell, I'm starting to space out, you know, and, uh, I am needing to get some food guys. Thank you guys for being in here for this stream. Two hours. It's respectable. It's not great. Yeah. Create our own comics. <laughs> That's what it's all about, man. Yes, indeed, Beef Law, guys. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Man on Fire, um, Denzel Washington movie uh, this week. Jericho, Gabe, uh, and I, or I should say uh, Jericho and I on Gabe's channel. Uh, so make sure you do check it out. Um, and uh, his daughter, Minnie, congratulations, Minnie. Gabe became a grandfather and Minnie became a mother. Congratulations to both of you guys. Um, and, uh, and to, of course, uh, Adrian, uh, Gabe's wife. I don't want to leave her out of this. Um, but we're going to be talking about Man on Fire by Denzel Washington this uh, coming up Wednesday. And uh, I'm going to keep doing these streams, guys. As long as you guys are here to watch them, I'm going to keep doing them. We're going to close out and thank you guys. Bow indeed to everybody. And uh, we're going to be uh, closing out with the credits, as we always do on this channel. And yes, do check out Jericho's channel. He's been showing uh, the links to Gabe and, and uh, my campaigns, and I, I'm really grateful to him for that. So thank you, Jericho, for doing all of that work. 300,000 subscribers. I mean, that guy is a machine, and he puts out so much uh, content. It's ridiculous. But thank you guys so much. Uh, and we will get to a Chuck Norris film. I promise, Teflon Ron. We are going to get to it. It's going to happen. Oh, yeah. I, I, Mighty Geek Studios, you're so right about Beef Law. It's going to be like total Van Damage. All right, folks. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you guys have made my Sunday morning all the better. And uh, I will see you guys soon. Here's my thank you to the channel members for their support. And I will see you guys soon. As always, stay gold. Peace.
Much love, uh, and uh, you guys are the best, so keep the faith. Take care.